Okay, so I did want to shoot a, a video today on uh, mothers, or it could be sisters, or it could be romantic partners, people that there seems to be very extreme heavy baggage with, heavy karma with. And um, yeah, those are, I, I mean, my take on that is those are people you've probably had quite a lot of past lives with. So um, where you probably, um, given them a very hard time over multiple lifetimes and they've given you a hard time over multiple lifetimes. So, you know, you meet those people and even if you're very spiritually advanced, they tend to give you a lot of trouble. Uh, and they, they seem to be, I mean, it seems to be, I mean, this is the victim modality that they know how to press your buttons. Uh, you can be in a good place and yet they'll do they keep doing and saying something until you're unhooked you're unbalanced and you're at a low level of consciousness and you're as bad you know they're they're angry and now you're angry and, and you know like 10 minutes ago you were uh, in the observer in the flow so those people i say you've got heavy karma with and i think um the best thing to do with those uh is to you know uh well, my view was, you know, with my mother, I wanted full, uh, full transcendence, 100% transcendence. Now, the Course in Miracles says that um, everything in the world is meaningless. So the table, look at the table for a second, it's meaningless. Look at the mug for a second, it's meaningless. Look at the curtains for a second, they're meaningless. Everything should be given equal attention because everything is equally meaningless in this world. So as you do this, and the intention is, to render anything that has an attachment to it, that has meaning, that you get hooked in and that you're invested in, that you just, you know, you just chop that cord until it's nothing. You know, or as Hawkins would say, very, uh, very inspiring, he just disappears anything that's a trouble, a problem until it doesn't exist for him. And uh, there, are, there are ways of doing that, uh, but you've got to be willing. If you, want to, if you want to cut something so it doesn't torment you out, you've got to be willing to let go, I mean, it doesn't mean that the relationship doesn't continue, but your personal identification, how your ego projects meaning onto that needs to be 100% chopped off. So you become an open channel. There's nothing they can do, say, or scream um, that triggers you. Now that takes a lot of spiritual work. I think with my mother, it took about five years and then the relationship transformed miraculously into the most incredible relationship. But it was that thing, it's like, okay, there's nothing you can do, nothing you can say uh, that, that, uh, that I'll hook into. So that's uh, probably what a, a Zen master might try and do or a teacher, you know, or a, someone who's seeking enlightenment. So that, you know, you cannot be a victim of any voice, any person, any situation. In fact, everything's meaningless. So how, how can you if you get to those high levels? So, but with, with, there's a lot of baggage, you know, a lot of spiritual works required. Um, and there seems to be a lot of susceptibility to hooking into what they say is because, you know, there's a lot of stuff there. There's a lot of repressed feelings and belief systems, you know, that's all the, your karmic baggage with the other person. Um, one, you know, but intuitively you want to get it like this. Like when my mother used to, would, if my mother could, would say to me something like, uh, you haven't cleaned your room, you know, you know, uh, go clean it up now. Somehow that would affect me, you know, her tone of voice. It would seem to have some emotional resonance for me. I'm sure if a person on the street said, you've got a messy room, you should clean it up. You know, I'd just bat an eyelid, it was meaningless. You know, I don't know who you are. You're a meaningless stranger saying I should have a tidy, I don't care about your opinion on the state of my room. Uh, and I'd still be in the present moment. I'd have forgotten about it within a split second. I wouldn't even register it probably, like I don't care. So if you are caring and if people are triggering you, that means there's a lot of meaning there uh, or they're bringing up a lot of repressed feelings which you can feel out or go to the observer or, but if you're hooking into their stuff. So uh, if your mother or your sister or whatever it is, is uh, triggering you or if you, or if you're holding memories you, you can't let go of resentments or things or whatever then you just uh, work on transcending those you know until they're meaningless uh, and then you sort of cut the cords and then you be, you know there is no personal baggage uh, with that person so I'm not saying that's easy 
uh, you can practice the being, you know, practicing the detached observer, uh, placing them into God's infinite light and love, praying for miracles and trends. So if you're in the observer, before you meet them, stay in the observer. Um, if you're in the room, remember that you don't have to hook into your story or them. There is an observer there in the room, which is not you and not them. And it doesn't get hooked into anything that, that you think or they say. So that observer is always available. And if you're, um, as St. Francis says, what you're looking for is where you're looking for, from. So just staying in that deeper place and not allowing yourself to hook into your thinking or what's going on will keep you in those powerful uh, places. Okay, so I'm gonna stop.